the first year of they made 70k second year they made j- just under 200,000 and then the third year he got like 30k and then sold his percentage for 65 It's October 2022, and I decided to make a tweet asking if anyone had any cool build ideas that I could use. Only a few minutes had passed, and the post suddenly received a like, but it didn't come from just any random person. It was from a verified Twitter account by the name of GlenMC, which was back then when Twitter accounts were only given check marks if they were actually famous. I had never heard of this guy, so I just clicked on his profile, and honestly his page looked pretty legit. He had an impressive 2.5 million followers on YouTube, and an even crazier 7 million on TikTok. I didn't think much of it at the time, but a few days later, after creating a new tweet asking for more ideas, it happened again. GlennMC had liked my tweet. I was very confused as to why this was happening, and this verified guy was suddenly liking all of my tweets. When I clicked on his profile again, I saw that he had a link in his bio that was advertising his new Discord server called Skycube. So I joined it, and I was fairly surprised at how normal it all looked. It had a welcome section, as well as an announcement section that was advertising the release date of November 5th, 2022. When looking at the member section, there he was, founder GlennMC, as well as two other owners, Charlie and Jet. Still confused and now with more questions than answers, I went back to Twitter and checked out his likes, only to see that he had liked over 914,000 tweets. Something was clearly wrong here. In a new mission to figure it all out, I began doing some research on his socials mentioned in his bio. And after just a few minutes of searching, I found his channel which had 204,000 subscribers, not the 2.5 million he had advertised. I then searched for his TikTok where he supposedly had 7 million followers, but when I searched it up, nothing. It was at that moment that I knew something was up with this account and I began investigating. When I took another look at his Twitter account, I noticed that his user tag was a bit off. It said Glenn Hammond KY, which after a quick Google search showed that this account was previously owned by a senator in Kentucky which is probably why it was verified, but it somehow ended up being placed in the possession of GlennMC. To put into perspective how much time would be spent on liking 914,000 posts, if Glenn liked on average one post per second, it would take 254 hours to get to that crazy number. So at that point, I was starting to think that GlennMC wasn't actually a real person, but a fake character created by the real owners behind all of this. This is somewhat also confirmed by the fact that GlennMC Discord account only ever posted two messages and never really interacted with anyone. But as the launch of the server was going to be in a couple days, I simply waited to see what was going to happen. And happen it did. On launch day, the server got about 50 players, which isn't really that bad, but after a couple hours, everybody had left and the server was just basically left deserted. No more than one or two players were online at any given time. People though, could still log into the server for a couple days, but about a month later, it was just permanently shut down and all channels and traces of activity in the discord server had been wiped with 10 channels remaining to this day. So at this point I figured out pretty much everything I could on my own so it's time to actually get in touch with the people behind the scenes to get some definitive answers and start piecing together a timeline. After messaging a couple people on the members list I found a ridiculous amount of people who were willing to speak out about Skycube and all of its operations. As a smart man once said This entire operation was leakier than the Titanic. But to be fair, half of the holes in the ship were due to Charlie himself leaving clues absolutely everywhere you went. The first person I spoke to was a guy called Shortaholic, who I'll refer to as Short, the developer hired by none other than one of the two owners, Charlie, to develop the server. And I hopped in a call with Short just to try to figure out who was behind all of this. So from what I've been looking at here, Charlie seems to be the main person behind Skycube and the one who does the most things. How did you come to learn about Charlie and how did you come to join Skycube? Alright, so basically, uh, I know Charlie because he hired me a like six, seven months ago to do a server setup and commission for one of his old networks. Um, that shut down due to inactivity and him not wanting to do the project anymore. For advertisement, Skycube went about it in an interesting way. They had somebody make a bot where they spent $3,000 on to like every single tweet that used keywords such as Minecraft, MC, and stuff like that, that basically related to Minecraft. The thing though, is the account that they put the bot under used to belong to a senator in Kentucky and then was eventually placed in the hands of Charlie and Skyq where they just essentially wreaked havoc on Twitter with him. 
So basically, they didn't hack the account. Someone else already hacked it like a few months prior to them purchasing the account. So they, they just they just bought a random verified account and it happened to be Glenn Hammond. Okay, because I was looking around and there were two theories floating around that everybody was talking about and were theorizing basically both in my DMs and in my comment sections. Um, the theory one was that, the one that I supported, it was the idea that Charlie bought this account from Glenn Hammond, the senator, and they kept the account and started doing all this stuff on it. The other theory though, was that the account was hacked by Charlie and the SkyQ people, and that's how they acquired it. Apparently though, <laughs> it was a mixture of both of these ideas, which I'm not sure people really knew. They spent $100 an hour to get the bot done. So they used a professional developer that had like, or heaps of experience but the bot cost three thousand dollars alone so on top of paying three thousand dollars for a bot that they barely used and realistically barely affected their player base they also paid you in your entire dev team no um i'm still yet to be paid um i mean i got scammed a lot of money uh charlie himself also owes around a grand to a build team he's still yet to pay that as well he owes me a thousand dollars um that's that's all I know about only oh, money, but um, one of my devs actually never got paid for three of the plugins he created. Basically, anyone that played on the server, to an extent, for how it turned out, did get scammed. To an extent, I agree with Short here. People spent money on Skycube and basically got scammed. Just as quickly as it appeared on the internet, Skycube just disappeared. Their Discord server right now is basically a wasteland with 10 channels remaining, one of which showing how disliked it was and how quickly it was abandoned by Charlie and the staff. You would think though that after spending $3,000 on a bot, they would have made money back, right? Okay, because from what I've heard, Skycube made like thousands of dollars in its entirety the time it was open. They didn't make any money. From Skycube? Yeah. They didn't make any money? Nothing. We made $200 on the first day and that was it. It was like $267 or something. Didn't make a single cent after that. Uh, we were going to start paying for YouTubers and content creators, streamers, and whatnot. Um, but obviously, we never got down to that. So on top of scamming you for what you were owed, paying the developer for the bot $3,000, and only making like 260 Skycube had an even bigger budget for advertisement. We were willing to spend, I think we had a budget of seven to $10,000 for content creators, which means we would have made all of our money back on Christmas with a massive Christmas launch that we were going to do. We, I had an estimate from the analytics that I studied. We would have made fifty to seventy thousand dollars for Christmas. I'm sure you can imagine the devastation that Charlie was in after spending that much money on a server just for it to make two hundred dollars. Which honestly, I find kind of weird since it had ranks that cost up to fifty dollars and in-game items that cost about the same. For Charlie, though, that was the end of Skycube, and he basically decided to shut it down. And it's been in the state that it's in right now ever since. I continued talking with Short though, specifically about Charlie's past before joining Skycube, and he started talking about some things that I didn't know about. He made $47,000 from Fortnite Creator Code, um, didn't pay a single bit of tax on it and kept every cent. For now, ignore the fact that Short said Charlie didn't pay taxes, we'll get to that later. What is this Fortnite supported creator code Short is talking about? Because from my latest video, we knew Jet played Fortnite, but Chart Italy as well? And making $47,000 off of it too? He did get his supporter credit code stripped because he didn't upload content. Like, it, it was like, well, he basically paid someone to upload content for him. It was like $100 to make a video, he got 50k out of it. Oh, he still he still had 14,000 in there, but because his credit code got disabled, he lost that 14k, so. Doing a little digging, you can see that Short wasn't really lying here. If you go to Charlie's old Twitch, in which he has about like 1.6 thousand followers, he linked his YouTube channel, which was named Charlie. Just taking a look at it, you can see the type of person that Charlie was and basically the type of channel that he ran. But that wasn't even the worst part. If you even take a look at some of his videos using the Wayback Machine, you can just see the type of videos he ended up creating and the type of person he was with these so-called scams, which they basically were. Regardless though, that wasn't even the craziest thing Short told me that Charlie did. And he told me a name that I hadn't really heard before, Melon SMP. I wasn't really familiar with Melon SMP. I mean, I had heard of it and I knew Charlie had servers before Skycube, but I didn't know that it was this deep. I managed to find out that Melon SMP had a pretty long history, way before it is what it is now. I managed to track down a group of OGs 
that used to play on Melon SMP when it was created and people that used to work for Charlie when Melon SMP was at its beginnings. I'll be honest, they completely changed everything that I thought about Charlie with the amount of information that they gave me. So one of the OGs here, Puddle, gave me some information and set up a timeline so the story was easier to follow. Here's how it goes. On January 7th, 2021, Charlie created a server called the Dream Fandom Network. It might seem a little bit off topic to introduce a server right now, but trust me, it connects the story and it gets better. But swing by a few months, May 16th, Charlie decided that after some time, he was going to revamp and make some changes to the network. He hired a bunch of people, including our very own Puddle, who was hired as an admin. Another person who was hired, though, was a developer called Nevermind. Now, keep in mind that these positions, both the developer role for Nevermind and the admin role for Puddles, were advertised as paid. Check this screenshot out. Charlie explicitly says, even making it bold to help me out, that it was a paid position. Another fast forward, though, to June 21st of 2021, and Charlie made a big announcement to all of the staff. The Dream Fandom Network was gonna be rebranded to a new server called Melon SMP, the one we know now today, of course. Less than one month after the rebrand to Melon SMP, Charlie did something that I didn't really understand. On July 17th, 2021, Charlie fired both Puddles and Nevermind, the admin and the dev. Keep in mind that at the time they were fired, they had not been paid a single cent from Charlie and Melon SMP or even the Dream Phantom Network. Charlie and Nevermind exchanged a bunch of messages after they were fired, all of which will be included in the link in the description, which includes the resources sources for this video, such as screenshots and links and that stuff. The messages would take about five minutes to read out to you, so I'm not just gonna summarize them for you here. Again, if you wanna read them for yourself, please check the description. It's gonna be the first link you see there. Charlie essentially told Nevermind that the reason he wasn't paid was that apparently they had agreed on the fact that the staff would only be paid if the server was profitable, which apparently, according to Charlie, it wasn't. And to be honest, that's kind of a fair point, but like at the same time, Charlie literally advertised the position as being paid. Regardless though, Charlie also said that even though Melon SMP was making money, he wasn't going to pay Nevermind or Puddles because they had been hired to work on the Dream Fandom Network rather than Melon SMP. And basically that's where the story with this OG group ended in terms of Melon SMP. However, Short made sure that it wasn't the end of the story with Melon SMP. Charlie, the only thing he's paid tax on is when he sold his 50% of Melon SMP, which was uh, $65,000. He paid tax, he was like, it was like 30 grand tax or something. That 50% was, it was 51%, but it was just owned by Charlie. The 49 was owned by Hohos, but yeah, he, uh, Charlie sold his 51 to Dayton and I would. I think this is a pretty good place for me to intervene here because I have a few things to say. Um, the person that Short just mentioned is this guy, Hohas. Basically, Hohas was a staff member on Melon SMP. He owned a small percentage of Melon SMP, but then he started growing through the ranks. And then he got more and more percentage, and as Short said, he got up to 49%. And again, as Short said, he bought out Charlie's percentage of Melon. So that's basically where Hohas comes from. Another thing I wanted to mention was that as of October 2022, so like three or four months ago, and even earlier than that, Charlie has had zero affiliation with Melon SP. As of right now, the current owners that Short spoke of, Dayton and Imod, and most recently the new co owner, Cam, all have zero affiliation with Charlie, so don't send hate or anything their way. Just as a little side note. The first year of Melon, they made 70k. Second year, they made j just under 200,000. And then the third year, he got like 30k and then sold his percentage for 65. Well, he, di he didn't pay tax on um, any of his Tebex withdrawals as well. I'm not going to say anything else about Charlie, maybe or maybe not paying his taxes because I'm not trying to get in trouble here. It doesn't matter though because you're now nearly caught up with the story on Charlie. There's a surf of Charlies that I haven't necessarily mentioned yet. Super SMP. If you're in Skycube's Discord server, you'll probably have heard of this SMP as the only time they've ever advertised this server was by sending a ping to everyone on the Skycube Discord server. Charlie, the owner of the server, hasn't really given us much information on Super SMP. To be honest, he hasn't given us any information on it. No links, no dates, no release dates, no staff members, nothing. 
Here's where things get a little bit interesting though. A few days ago, I got a DM from Shore. Keep in mind that at the time that I got this DM, it had been nearly two weeks since I had been in VC with him. He told me that the situation with Charlie had completely changed. Short said that Charlie did a 180 on everything. Charlie had apparently paid everyone, from Short himself to Nevermind. Charlie also apparently told Short that no one did server setups as good as him, and that he wanted to work with Short again. When I heard that, I was kind of interested, because Short said that Charlie had changed and that Super SMP wasn't going to be a scam, and that it was going to be done legit. And to be honest, I believed him. My belief wasn't really with Charlie, it was in Short and that he would help Charlie go the right way. However, less than a week later, Short sent me a message. He tells me that essentially, Charlie has dropped him to work on the server with someone who could bring a larger backing to the server financially, and instead of taking a larger cut, this mystery person would only take 25% of the server profits. This new person Charlie was going to work with also would use their TikTok and their social to advertise the Super SMP server. I had a question though for Short. Who was this mystery person? I asked Short who he was, and he gave me one name. Zyro. That created a new question for me. Who is Zyro?